Hey everyone, really quick before today's episode gets started, I want to tell you about the exciting new TCG Player subscription. This subscription comes with a ton of perks. First up, when you're subscribed and you order through Direct, your orders ship first. And also when you order through Direct, you get free shipping with absolutely no order minimum. On top of that, you get extra bonus bucks that's up to 3% store credit on all of your orders. So with that, the longer that you're subscribed, the better that it gets. Starting on day one of subscribing, you earn 1% back. After three months, you get 2% back. And after one year, you get that incredible 3% back. And on top of that, there are even subscriber-only kickback promotions. The TCG Player subscription is just $6.99 a month. And actually, if you subscribe today using my promo code and you're one of the first 500 people to subscribe, well, for that first month, you're going to get that $6.99 back in store credit. So make sure you use my promo code QUARTERS. Again, this is only for the first 500, so if you're interested, make sure you subscribe utilizing that promo code QUARTERS. So Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate spoiler season is finally here. And with the very first quick take that I'm going to be doing during the official spoiler season, this is so, so evil. Now, that's what I'm saying, but I'll let you be the judge of that. Because, and again, my apologies, I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce everything, but John Arenicus Shattered One is a 3-3 elf wizard that costs two blue black. And it has, at the beginning of your end step, target opponent gains control of up to one target creature you control. Put two plus one counters on it and tap it. It's goaded for the rest of the game, and it gains this creature can't be sacrificed. And again, as a reminder, goading basically means it attacks each combat if able and attacks a player other than you if able. Now, if that wasn't enough, on top of that, whenever a creature you own but don't control attacks, you draw a card. This is a brutal effect that is quite spicy, and it can generate you a ton of value. Now, yes, sure, you could just build the deck in a way where you have, okay, you know, maybe some big evasive creatures that you're like, okay, I'll give them my opponents, make them slightly bigger, and then they swing at my other opponents and do my dirty work for me, and I get to gain, you know, card advantage from that as well. But of course, there are uh, plenty of, let's just say, more evil creatures that you can give your opponents. It's kind of like a Zedru commander in a way but kind of with combat involved as well. Zedra doesn't, you know, force an opponent to attack with the, you know, thing that you give them. This says, yeah, here's something. It's now bigger. Attack with it. Have fun. And because of that, really brutal things can happen. I mean, just at a base level, if you are giving out, you know, one creature a turn, if even after three turns, let's say you've got three creatures out there that, you know, you own but don't control, they're going to be attacking and you're drawing like three cards a turn. And that's just pretty incredible. Or not a turn, I guess I should say. Each trip around the table depends on what opponent that you're giving them to. You know what I mean? But yeah, to really delve into all the absolutely disgusting things that you can do with this commander, let's talk about the cards and the creatures that can really make this commander hit incredibly hard. And really quick, when a new commander like this one is spoiled, well, sometimes card prices do go up with cards that work really well with it. And because this commander is pretty unique, I can definitely see a lot of players being very excited about it, and I can definitely see certain card prices spiking. So yeah, I've included a link to the cards I'm talking about in the description below. So you might want to consider picking up some cards sooner rather than later for this one. Now with that said, let's jump into those cards. Now, the first card that came to my mind is actually one that I highlighted in last spoiler season as a card to be picked up because of another commander with the Beamtown Bullies, and that would be Hell Carver Demon. This thing was like a less than $1 mythic rare from a long time ago. I believe that's World Wake. And, and yeah, it saw almost no play in commander, you know, outside of Alex's uh, spicy deck that is really epic. It's a 6-6 Flying Demon that says, Whenever deals comedy to a player, sacrifice all their permanents you control and discard your hand. Exile the top six cards of your library. You may cast any number of non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost. So, yeah, there's a reason this saw pretty much no play before you could give it to an opponent and force them to do this because, yeah, all of that work that they built up for, you know, all the things that have been played, every card in their hand is now just gone. And you just have a 6-6 Flyer and essentially what miscellaneous things you might hit off the top of your library. So yeah, with this new commander, give this to your opponent and have fun watching them hit an opponent for eight in the air and then lose all of their things. And speaking of losing things, Evan Blade Reaper is another one that's going to be fantastic with this. A 1-1 that has, when it attacks, you lose half your life, round it up. 
On top of that, whenever deals counter to a player, that player loses half their life rounded up as well. So this might not survive combat, but that's okay. You're basically giving your opponent a 3-3, you know, again, after those counters. And then they're like, okay, I'll swing with it because I guess I have to because it's goaded and now I've lost half my life rounded up just from attacking. And of course, on top of that, you might have other ways to help this actually get through and maybe you're tapping down your opponent's creatures, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, you've got ways to try to get this through so that your opponent that this hits is punished as well. But next up, an incredibly spicy card that you're going to want to consider with this new commander is Abyssal Persecutor, a 6-6 flying trample demon that has you can't win the game and your opponents can't lose the game. Now, obviously, be careful with this one because it does benefit your other opponents that you're not giving this to as well. But yeah, that player that you give this to literally cannot win the game as long as this is in play under their control. But yeah, with that, not only can you not lose the game, but your other opponents can't too, but still, there's some really exciting things that you can do with this. And speaking of exciting, well, at least for you, how about Phyrexian Negator, a 5-5 horror with Trample that has, whenever it's dealt damage, sacrifice that many permanents. So you give this to an opponent, it's now a 7-7, and um, yeah, if they're going to be attacking another player and that player actually wants to take this out, they're going to have to block quite a bit on it. So yeah, at least, you know, seven damage. So good luck uh, to that player's sacrifice now seven permanents because they have this and had to swing with it. And of course, that can be even more. Obviously, the opponent is going to be incentivized to block with a lot of things to force that player to sacrifice. Well, probably their, you know, entire board, except for this Rexy Negator, which can't be sacrificed. And of course, because the creature that you're giving them can't be sacrificed, you can really take advantage of that with cards like Plague Reaver and Desecration Elemental. Plague Reaver is a 6-5 beast that says at the beginning of your end step, sacrifice each other creature you control. Now there is a safety valve on this card, though. Discard two cards, sacrifice Plague Reaver, choose target opponent, return Plague Reaver to the battlefield under that player's control to begin their next upkeep. Unfortunately for that player that you give this to with your commander, though, um, they, uh, they can't do that because that would be sacrificing this creature as part of the cost, and they can't sacrifice it. So therefore, it's just in play under their control, forcing them to, over and over and over, sacrifice all their other creatures at the beginning of their end step. So yeah, it's going to be really hard for them to keep anything in play. Speaking of which, Desecration Elemental is an 8-8 Elemental that has fear, and it says whenever a player plays a spell, sacrifice a creature. Now, obviously, you need to be careful when you get this one out, because if players start, you know, casting a bunch of instants, you're going to have to sacrifice quite a few things, but yeah, if you can get this in play under an opponent's control with your commander, good luck to them. A 10-10 elemental with fear that forces them to sacrifice all their creatures because players are going to keep casting spells. That player is going to have absolutely no board, and, and yeah, it, it basically turns any spell that anyone casts into a free edict effect on that player. Now, of course, there are other repeatable effects that force opponents to sacrifice creatures, like, you know, Demonic Taskmaster, a 4-3 flying demon that has the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice a creature other than Demonic Taskmaster. Or, you know, Lord of the Pit, a 7-7 flampling demon that says the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice a creature other than Lord of the Pit if you can't Lord of the Pit deal 7 damage to you. So, whether it's just, you know, forcing players to sacrifice creatures, or, you know, having them sacrifice creatures and if they can't, getting damaged by that, there are some really powerful effects, and yeah, again, these are just great ways to get extra damage thrown to your other opponents if they don't have any flyers. Or I should say, maybe if they don't have any flyers, or if you don't have any other ways to help get these creatures through. Because again, when you're building around this commander, you're going to want to consider creatures that probably have some form of evasion or are just absolutely massive, or make sure that you've got other ways to you know, maybe tap down your opponent's creatures to help get them through or to make that creature unblockable, etc, etc, etc. Regardless, outside of sacrificing creatures, maybe you've got something like a Rust Elemental you want to give to an opponent, a 4-4 Flying Elemental that says at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice an artifact other than Rust Elemental if you can't tap Rust Elemental and you lose 4 life. So yeah, even if that opponent is already being decimated by your other sacrifice creature effects, well, now you've got to sacrifice your Mana Rocks, so... Sorry, opponent, you're, you're not going to have very many resources left, and after you lose all those artifacts, you start losing life. Or maybe you want to consider Greater Harvester 856 that has the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice a permanent. Whenever Greater Harvester deals common to a player, that player sacrifices two permanents. So again, definitely work in some considerations for some other cards that can help you get creatures through because, well, if you can't, an opponent might be able to block this one because it's forced to attack and then they can just, you know, get rid of it. But if you can work and get this actually through, you're not only hurting that one opponent that you gave this to, but also the opponent that's getting hit by this. Now, of course, outside of getting rid of your opponent's permanence by, you know, generously donating them some of your awesome creatures, maybe you can just donate them Rotting Registrar, a 7-6 zombie dinosaur that says at the beginning of your upkeep, discard a card. 
So, of course, there are ways to punish your opponents outside of, you know, making them sacrifice their things. You can also help get rid of their resources by getting rid of their hand, too. And again, on top of that, for just three mana, giving someone a 9-8 to attack with against your other opponents. Now, do keep in mind with that that when you are in a one-on-one -on -one situation, though, those creatures are still goaded, which means they have to attack. But um, if you're one-on-one, -on -one, they're going to be attacking you. So make sure you've got ways to deal with that. Maybe, you know, you can steal your opponent's creatures back and swing with them, you know, with something like a reins of power or whatnot. But yeah, make sure you've got a backup plan for, you know, that one-on-one -on -one scenario that's going to happen at the end of the game. Also, though, one other creature that I do want to highlight that Zedru decks love and that is probably going to be pretty loved in this deck is Steel Golem. It's a 3-4 Golem that says you can't play creature spells. So this one, I, again, am going to give, you know, the caveat that it is just a 3-4. Obviously, those counters, it's going to be a 5-6. But still, this can get taken out pretty easily in combat. Or maybe not easily, but it can definitely be taken out more easily than some of the other evasive creatures that I've highlighted or the more massive ones that I've highlighted, too. But yeah, it has a massive downside for that player that you give this to, and if it's able to stay in play or if you're able to, you know, have ways to help get it through in combat, it can be game-ending against the right decks. Again, if there's a creature strategy, good luck to them trying to do anything. Now, outside of those generously donated creatures, let's talk about some other cards that can help us out as well. Teferi Sage's Insight says if you would draw a card except the first one you draw on each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. And Thought Reflection is very similar. It says if you draw a card, draw two cards instead, so it doesn't have that first restriction. Regardless, each of these essentially function the exact same way with this commander, where, hey, if your opponents are attacking with those creatures that you just so generously donated to them, you draw a card when that happens, and now instead, you draw two cards per creature attacking. So as if your commander wasn't able to provide you enough value already, and it's an incredible amount of value, this doubles up that incredible amount of value to just an absurd amount. So make sure you're looking to take advantage of all those cards that you're going to be drawing. And actually, when it comes to enchantments, I want to highlight another one, or should I say another type of one, with a Curse with Curse of Verbosity. It says enchant player, whenever enchanted players attack, you draw a card. Each opponent attacking that player does the same. Depending on your build, curses like this one might be something you want to consider as well. If all of your opponents are still playing, well, that player that you're giving the creature to that is goaded does have to attack, but that player does have an option between two players it's going to be attacking. So maybe you want that person to actually attack with that creature at a certain opponent so you can incentivize those attacks further. And while incentivizing that attack, that player gets a small benefit, and so do you, of course. And again, you know, with Curse of Verbosity, you also can double that up with Teferi Sage's Insider Thought Reflection, so have fun with that. But yeah, at the end of the day, I think there are some incredibly evil and spicy, but mostly evil things that you can do with this commander. And yeah, be careful if you're playing against this one because you just might get donated that Phyrexia Negator and then your entire game plan is just out the window. You know, with all of your other permanents as well. But yeah, I think a lot of players are going to be really excited about this commander. It works in a different way. Again, it's kind of like a Zedru, but with goading and also, you know, a massive amount of card advantage too. So it's pretty unique. And I think a lot of players are going to be excited about it. And again, because of that, I think certain cards, you know, that work really well, this commander that don't really see a lot of play elsewhere might go up in price. So again, if you are looking to build around this commander and you're excited about it, make sure you check out the link in the description below for those cards that I did mention on this episode. And of course, make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for even more exciting quick takes. And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.